Hello and welcome to Dells Gaming and this is from the Depths Designer once more and in this particular episode I'm going to be going on from where we had previously looked at stealth um, or detection systems and how to make your, your vehicle a little bit more stealthy and I'm going to be trying to create a stealth plane or as stealthy as possible. I don't think it's possible to make a true stealth plane, but I'm going to give a go at see how far we can go with making a plane which is at least difficult to hit and difficult to see. So I'm going to go through the build principles and what I'm thinking. So basically, um, as we found, a lot of this is going to be made from alloy and um, rubber which means that the ship is not going to be the fastest uh, aircraft in the world um, uh, which is unfortunate but um, we didn't have to go with what we've got there's not a lot we can change on that um, so my first thoughts are that I want to make this um, I first of all got to think about the weaponry what are we actually gonna try and try to achieve so I think that because of the way that the white flares and um, guns are I think getting close is probably gonna be a bad idea so I think the vessel that I'm gonna aim for will be shooting at longer ranges uh, potentially and just gonna launch missiles and rockets out at say the yeah, say a 1200 1500 so I want to make it not very detectable then it run away for a bit then come back in uh, but well that's my my theory but um, also I'm just gonna change the settings the bloom seems to have got affected on here and this is a bit bright so but I'll be back in one second that's a bit better still a little bit bright for some reason my all my settings got uh, reset when I came into the game the other day anyway let's carry on where I was and what I was talking about so weaponry um, so it'll be a missile armed vessel I think would be the ideal um, now what I'm gonna first do is set up the weaponry AI and uh, propulsion and then worry about other bits now I'm thinking having a 3b3 area in the center as the primary area for um, uh, containing most of the equipment inside the vehicle now I'm using slopes rather than solids just to save a bit of resource count so that's going to give us 2b3 and then potentially uh, this on the top um, as the primary sort of body area now I could leave the top open for the moment and we see we must we won't need rubber etc on the top but that's going to give me a 3b3 area um, now if you put an AI in here just as a starting point and we will I, I am going to try and um, reduce snooper usage I'm, I'm de debating whether to use the intra vehicle sensor on this or let it sort itself all its sensors out itself um, hmm we'll have to have a think about that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of split to be frankly honest it could you know it, both ways are possible um, right let's have a look what else have we got um, cards or slot we need a card so we put that just um, straight on so yeah I'm there possibly not have Mm, okay oh so my, my brain was as always I'm trying to talk at the same time as do things which is never easy as, as some people I'm sure and understand uh, actually, I might just change that the angle of that there we go that looks a little bit better there we go right um, 
yeah, I'm, I might try and I'm going to create a few different versions of this plane and we'll see which one goes out. First of all, let's try and make it as stealthy as possible so um, it won't take any targeting information from other planes. It will purely use its own so there'll be no turrets with um, any extras or um, you know, any targeting information. It's purely they get what targeting it can itself. Now the wings, let's say the wings and then we go there. Let's think about the missile system. So if we've got an AI there, let's see if I take that off there and uh, put a weapon controller in. Uh, let's just put one more connector in here, then a weapon controller. Weapons wise, I'm thinking that I could most probably have a couple of different weapons. I can use normal missiles, but I might have missiles and also a torpedo. Um, we'll see how that sort of works. So if we go across there, so here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six to the back. Yep, that should be enough, allowing for a little extra. So a couple of connectors on the side. Uh, why is that red? Is that red because it's got no... Let's put my UI up, come on, up UI up, and cool. Right, no launch pads. Okay, so now I'm gonna have rearward dropping launch pads. So where were they? They were under medium rear reverse launch pads. That looks good. And then we'll put some gantries in there facing downwards. Now this is going to have big missiles. Now what I'm thinking is having one larger than the other, a torpedo, large torpedo and a active radar missile. So it's going to drop two types of uh, weapons and it's only purpose as far as the stealth go is to get in range to drop these quite large um, missiles off. It then goes away, reloads and then comes back in again. That's gonna be the, for the moment, the premise of this ship, I think. Right, I'll put a, um, a beam in there just to cover that. Right, uh, yep, that should be fine. And we will set some requirements. So I'm doing all of the weapon setup now. So um, we'll let that be 180. And angle will only fire when ahead yeah we'll, we'll, we'll set these all to 90 all right copy the clipboard copy that over to both sides i think should be fine okay so clipboard there we go now what other things will we need we will need in the missiles we'll need a identify friend or foe See if we can put that direct where uh, maybe we can put that there. Yep. And we might need a staggered fire on each so that um they don't hit each other as they as they are launching. There there'll be different types of weapons, so it's not gonna be too much of a problem. Now I could I'm gonna go with just these four but it is potentially I could extend this out a little bit into what is going to be the wing and have a few more so let's just quickly come up with a design now I, these only got to go about 1500 so let's start with the missile active radar target precision doesn't have to be this I'm not this doesn't have to be very Agile, um, and this is going to be primarily an EMP. Um, let's put a fuel tank in there. Let's give, let's give it a little bit of. We're going to be aiming at the uh, big ships, so that's why I'm thinking this. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe one fin would be enough. I want this to be a very um, big ship for want of a better word now 40 seconds i think would be enough so we can put a fuel tank in there 
um, how many seconds have we got now so if we take we've got speed roughly we're going to have 133 for 49 seconds so we actually only need actually only need 10 seconds so actually I can possibly do without the regulator go for 20 seconds at 130 is 2600 meters that's going to go more than enough distance so if we put some more EMP in there and then we'll put um, maybe some explosive in there as well so we've got 29 seconds and maybe we can make this a, a high speed missile yeah okay that should be okay ramp up time up so we have a start delay um, two and a half seconds after it's ejected out the rear uh, guidance delay two seconds warhead arming delay is gonna be um, six seconds and then the thrust let's get that down to about the 20 seconds or do I just put let's put a bit more explosives in there there we go explosive warhead and uh, put this whoops we'll reduce it down again so let's see we've got activation delay start layer 2 so I need 7 so 17.5 uh, is all I need so it's 140 times yeah yeah I mean we've got nearly 3,000 meter range with this but I'm not gonna want to have it that far that far let's just save that um, in here and then we'll load it the same into the other side there we go so that should be and I can I can I might make some more of these but that's a good it's a starter now okay next torpedo so we should be able to fire that actually out to about 2,000 meters right this side torpedo active sonar we didn't have a target prediction and then we didn't have lots of explosives now we don't need again with this it's a big target we won't worry about making it too um, accurate we need a ballast tank and we'll need a um, okay actually I think I'll make it a bit turnier and the ballast tank there we go where are we ballast tank ballast tank ballast tank at zero that's fine so we've got 80 seconds I maybe we don't need the regulator uh, 46 meters that's um, foot to say 40 um, four fours that's 40 400 1600 meters um, okay maybe we do let's put the regulator in All right explosives oops I need a bit of fuel and we can increase the thrust a little bit because even with that we only need we've got 80 odd seconds um, so actually we need to take this down so if we allow for five seconds for startup um, 37 times yeah 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 30 that's 370 Yeah, yep, that's 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 more than enough. If we and the start delay a good five seconds because they have to drop into the water first. Warhead arming delay, yep, good six seconds. And guidance active delay, six seconds as well. Anything missing off of that? So torpedo sonar target guidance explosives fuel tank bus tank regulator 
fins that looks good to me we'll just save that in there as well and reload that into the opposite side Except this is, 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 is that brought over? No, the warhead arming delay didn't get brought over. That's strange. Okay, let's just check that compared to the other side. Seem to not putting everything at warhead arming delay. There's six, 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 four, five, five, six, six, five. Okay. I suppose if I made it all one big, um, it'd be easier actually, but never mind not done that now six start the bring in at six and then six there we go I could make just um, thinking about it I could put that back to there and put that here and make it all one big missile but no we'll leave it like that I'll be here forever changing things right next um, we're going to need to worry about um, sensors. We are going to need some sensors on this, so we're going to reduce, um, minimise it. Now, one thing I do know I'm going to want is some radar boys. And we're going to have two of them. Let's see if they will go on the size of that. Will that nope doesn't like it going there so let's just put them down below that just there okay so that's two radar boys so we'll be able to put those uh, drop those out behind and I forgot to set the, the the settings for this so we'll set settings at a minimum of 500 and a maximum of say 2000 we're going to try 2000 as our starting firing range and target the minimum height is going to be minus 10 to a maximum of allowing for a ship's AI might be a little bit out of the water we're going to say 10 this is not going to go for ground uh, this is going for sea vessels large um, sea vessels and number of blocks and they're going to have to be a reasonable size uh, 1000 There we go. That should should be okay, I think. Don't have to worry about self fail saves. These are just going to drop straight out the back. Now, one thing I've got to allow here is um, my one, two, yeah, thrusters. But we'll talk about we'll look at thrusters afterwards. The thrusters won't be able to uh, can't cover these. Otherwise, these will not eject. They've got to have a clear axis way out the back. That's fine though. That's fine. I'm sure I can work that through. So we've got these boys now. I'll need ejectors for the boys. Um, so that is going to be something else I will need. So that every X number of seconds it will eject a um, radar boy. So um, that needs to be in. I need two blo blocks high. Uh, yeah I think I can put that what if we put it in just here so if we go missiles a medium launcher facing downwards um, that's not gonna work I'm gonna need like that let's see and then we'll start instead with the controller It's got to be a flat side you put this onto and the medium launcher pointing downwards with the oops not medium rail medium gantry could I do it with that actually now let's try that and then I'm gonna try a medium rail 
like that and then have on the front of it a ballast tank and on the rear of it the radar boy Oops. that's a wrong way up right let's see the front pointing down should be the radar boy and then a ballast tank above it let's see so which is yeah that's looking the right way around now um, so that should just hopefully just drop that I've got to make sure it doesn't get hung up on anything and then all I need is a controller there and we'll put to put a block in the way because it doesn't need any extras we just have this here um, so every 20 seconds because just to confirm this will last for 40 seconds so I want two out there at any one time so we just say that we don't say 21 just to ensure it doesn't hit um, no actually we're going to do so differently don't do it differently the range to the top to enemy there's got to be an enemy out there so and then um because we only want it to be dropping these if there is um an enemy otherwise why bother you don't need to drop it you know it'd be a bit silly right so fire so what we're going to do is we have an action delay of one second here but we didn't say here the minimum activation level is 21 so it will only activate every 21 seconds so that means except for one a little gap we should have two um radar boys out at any one time in theory now one thing i haven't changed on here was the ballast tank i want this to bob in the water so the ballast tank has to be a buoyancy of plus 0.5 um, so that means it will fly out of the water hopefully now i don't realize the the boy is not the greatest detector but at least it should detect something so we'll see um if we're getting problems with the we're not detecting anything we will have to have a look at it now we will need some we'll have to look at possibly other ways of detecting um, the enemy now we will need some general processing cards because this will have some requirements um, so it needs four power at the moment I, uh, and we're gonna need out the back as well while I'm here we will need hmm if I put missile detectors in then I will need to put a connector for the AI for, to, to, to the mainframe that's a pain that's a pain okay um, a way around that how can I get around that right okay we can go with the basis of maybe just indiscriminately throwing out flares when and um interceptors when within a within firing range so as soon as i start firing i start ejecting out um flares etc now we can put that back here along with these bits so let's just try this let's see what see what we can do on here um, we have it out the back again as missiles, a small launcher. Let's make sure we get this the right way around. Yep, facing downwards. Looks 
looks like I'm going to have a few of these here, in which case I might as well put this on top. My idea being here, do I have an idea? Um, they should eject down. So, okay, we're going to go back to this here. So this is, I um, have to reset all of this up. Um, range, there is an enemy somewhere on the map. Weapon system, fire, make sure I get the range so it only fires one thing. There we go, and um, here 21, activate every 21 seconds. Okay, and these two, what we're going to do is range to the enemy. If we are within 2,000 meters, then the weapon system will fire but it'll only fire every five seconds. Yeah, so every five seconds it's going to send out a... a uh, this side's going to have... Let's get this right. There we, uh, where's my... There we... Right, so we've got an interceptor being chucked out that side every five seconds, and this side we will have a flare. Yeah, so it will just drop a flare um, underneath. Now, if I put a little thruster without even a short range thruster, it will just pop that out um, quite happily. Okay, so that's our hopefully our offenses and some defenses without actually using any detectors. The only thing we haven't got is a tracker but we're going to have to go with that as an idea so now what i'm going to do is i'm not worried about the, the shapes yeah next i need to think about well i do actually need to worry is uh power this is going to need some power for the engines and we're going to go for electric engine now i'm not sure how much power we're going to need let's have a look at um let's put some batteries at the back so the easiest way is to go in here with batteries I'm going to cover these up um, with batteries there we go and we'll set this we can adjust the amount of power we're going to have available through this we still, it's got to last a reasonable time but let's see uh, now I can put as we found that the ion thrusters were the best um, or least detected. So we'll start with one of those. And what was the power that's going to have? 90. And then we're going to add some more small ion thrusters, I think. Over that. Um, possibly also going out along this wing uh, section not through there because can't because um, we might just have to we might put another row down here but that's not going to be too much power I think I'm going to need a little bit more power than that let's see let's put that up to 20 So it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's 120, um, so that's about 200, so I think I'm going to need about 300 power. So we'll put this so that it 
gives us 600. I think I'm going to need more batteries basically. Let's put more batteries in. Right, so we put this down to 600, so at 50% power, it's still got enough to do. So we'll go a little bit above that, say 700. There we go. And now we need some RTGs. So RTG, uh, that will give me 50, which... Uh, if I have that many, it's given me power not enough to it still needs to be refueled by something but it won't be uh, the power won't be going down effectively we'll see we'll see so we've got 500 out of 700 and it would be getting power from its mothership would be the intention I can also put some more batteries actually going up here let's fill this space up totally just to see whether it's going to be a yeah, a bit battery hungry, but yeah, it's already got the, the power off of it, and we can reduce this a little bit. Right, let's say at that 0.25. We've still got a fair bit to work out. I've got to sort out some resources for ammunition, and I might put them however stupid it may seem I might put them in among the batteries because it's going to be about the most armoured part of this vessel I think but yeah that should be enough I need because I need a fair bit of ammo to be able to um, pull these up and I'll put some plating over the top of that Right, what else have we got to go here? Um, I have to think about control surfaces. So let's see, we've got that size there. I might be able to reduce the frontal section. We'll leave it for the moment. I might be able to reduce this down. I need a load of control blocks here to do various controlling that I have in mind here. So that's my control block area. And we've got this area in the center here. That's not a... That's red because it's not actually a part of the mainframe. Let's put that back there. I've got more general purpose than I need, but that's um, just that I've got some... Uh, I'm prepared for any eventualities that I might want to come up with. Let's build a wing, because we need a wing for the ailerons. And, um, yeah, let's see how that goes. So, um, again, nice and lightweight. We'll... I'm going to allow for the fact that I might want to increase this the size of this a little bit later. That should go there quite nicely and we'll have some reverse on the other way. then we will go see I need ailerons about here so we will go back with a I'm using um, although I'm going to be covering this in uh, rubber I'm trying to just make, yeah, make it it basically cost effective basically <laughs> uh, trying not to use any more than I really need to whilst I'm setting this up uh, 
also weight efficient i don't want to use any more weight so okay those missiles are showing underneath well, i don't think i'm going to get away from that okay we'll have a, a slight down slope of two going out here and this will be where our aileron sections are so we'll just do air either one make sure they're pointed the right way and that's for our roll control and then we'll just bring this back here um, what should we do let's go for like that that looks quite reasonable actually I don't mind that and then we can um, we could put extra bits in there in, in another ship but for the moment we'll just put some alloy plates in here just to now I don't want to actually put up on the top because I've got a feeling if I put them on the top they'll actually incre increase the signature uh, from the front of the cross section on the front now okay uh, that's those now I need some rudders and tail planes now what I'm thinking here is I don't want a traditional um, um, when, the, when I'm thinking traditional here I don't want a, uh, a system which is uh, normally you'd have sticking out the top because that would add to the size of the um, 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 Oh, brain's gone here because uh, I'm trying to do many things at once. Uh, it would add to the signature size. So, okay, we'll put some your own uh, picture only at the top here. I've got a feeling I'm going to need a fair bit of your control. So, we'll put that there just to try and add a bit of uh, pitch, pitch control. I might take those out there um, they're going to give me a your control don't need too much I may use some PIDs on this to give me a little bit more stability so I'm going to put them in now just in preparation okay let's just release that see what happens it's flying not very fast but it is flying without me doing anything so that's a good start look I just release it and away we go but I've got a, I'm gonna be making this go a lot less now which is gonna be annoying for it because we're gonna start rubberizing it in a second now I think it's gonna have to go so okay here's my choices as far as making this go a bit faster um, jet engines now I could just put in if I take that out there and there and have some white white alloy down slopes like that or is I don't need to put them in there Might as well use batteries. So I could just put a air jet engines up there. You can see already speed considerably increased 
I could put some, yeah, that, that would that would just immediately give it a massive increase. So that might be my non-stealthy approach. The stealthy approach is to put more ions. Ion thruster. Basically, put them around the giant one and it'll double up the speed. So we're, okay, what's the speed? 40s, it's not fast. Okay, but we're working on stealth, not anything else. Now, um, that being said, this has just made me think, in case this goes into space, I might need a jet, uh, one of those, oops, in there, so we're partially controlled. So this is a right-hand side roll, and this will be left-hand side roll. Now, to make sure we've got those right, we enable the, um, yep, that seems to be, is that, make sure that the yellow goes the same ways as the purples. Yep, that looks okay. And we will also need, um, take those off, thrust, uh, for thrusting, uh turn basically so if i put this like no is that why you, there we go look wrong way there we go now if i put this as a reverse thruster and that one as a reverse thruster and yep the yellows are going the same way as as the uh, oranges here so that'll act as my your control and we can put that a little bit more on there okay we, we've got a flying model as such now we need to totally spoil it by rubberizing it so i've spawned in or adapted another version without the rubber and bloody great big jet engines on the rear instead uh, called it Hawk so this is the rubberized version 20k which is an 18k so about a thousand because of the rubber now we can have a look at the the uh, um, visibility so 1600 1600 frontal visual distance uh, so that's the same on both of them 38 from the front 1600 from the rear so basically it wants to be going either straight at a target or straight away from the target it doesn't want to be um, at an angle or certainly not showing its sides okay that's fine let's have a look uh, heat wise um, can't see it but I, this one once those engines start up it will be yeah giving out quite a bit of heat um, in that regard radar wise so front 18 meters that's all the front radar um, section we've got on here 36 meters so actually they're both fairly small as, as far as front radar section goes rear 1100 as opposed to is that 800 or is that 300 can't quite see if that's 800 or 300 i think guess that looks 300 to me side 327 150 so yep much much um uh, much stealthier to the radar on the sides and the front. I mean, 18 meters, quite it's hardly going to be seen. You can see it does bulge out there. So, it, you know, if it's anything except for straight on, I think it's starting to pick up some of these angles at the top here. Um, as you get further away from the center, it's picking up more of the alloy. Um, let's see what else we've got sonar obviously we're not worried about and equipment obviously we we've, we've got various equipment so okay various detection ranges it makes a hell of a difference but now we've got to make this thing fly um so 
and fly in a way that it doesn't get too close so let's go and have a look at the the um, aerial AI and see what we can do first so we need it to be going very straight at the person so one degree is fine and I'm gonna try and not have it roll I think we'll make this a yawing um, plane in general so it will try to your anywhere um because hmm. i think if it shows its belly then that's a very bad thing but it could be okay let's do that um okay we set 90 degrees but have the roll angle not be too severe let's try that right now this is a this is where we have a choice do we make this a high flying aircraft or low flying and I might try a few different ones right we'll have we'll set the first of all we we'll set the minimum attitude at say 40 I think that should be enough and we'll start it to see if we can um, bring it in at we, we, this might be where we we change it let's let's see um, how it does at 50 meters attack runs um, I want the attack run to start above 2000 and abort at well we can only do 1000 I'm gonna have to change that um, and I think we're gonna have to be a bit more um, what should we say uh, I think that might be a bit higher say 90 I'm gonna have to use control blocks to reset these angles so okay first of all let's release this from the ship and welcome back to what I have come up with after a bit of flight testing and uh, uh, just to get them flying correctly which did take longer than expected so we've got two models we've first of all got the Nighthawk so it's got a visibility range of about 1600 we've got the um, rubber on the front now also I had to rubberize the underneath um, to, a, to a degree because it doesn't fly a hunt exactly level so any ship is going to be looking at it from a slightly slight angle underneath so it required a little bit of um, working underneath the AI on this has been set up to um, it, to run in two ways let me just bring up the AI details so the default setting on this is to uh, cruise at an altitude of 150 minimum it does have a few problems using the PIDs keeping above um, the sea level when it's in fleet mode which is a bit of a problem um, it, it's mainly using your control to keep that um, angle at only one degrees it does roll but only in extreme cases um, of angles mainly it's uh, under your control if we just see it flying so it's the Nighthawk we just release it so it's got the impulse engines um, so it's very IR um, stealth as such <laughs> very little IR signature uh, the missiles are uh, fairly much as we as they were I had to change the delays on them a little bit um, we've got flares underneath which dispense sequentially fairly quickly and some uh, interceptors as well but it it does those in uh, every five seconds when it's in range of the target I may change that to be a little bit quicker but uh, five seconds was just a starting point um, other changes there's a quite a few control blocks on this to keep it uh, moving away because of that 1600 view range is the key factor what we have is uh, if I can get to the right control block so excuse me here for a second let me just m make it a little bit more visible So in the control blocks here, we have first of all the combat one. So if there's an enemy um, more than two and a half thousand meters, it goes to combat mode quite simply. Um, second one, 
on the opposite side is as soon as it gets to 70, 18 to 1700 which is that visual range point it will go to fleet move which hopefully is in the opposite direction and because the fleet move will make it go into the water eventually I've set another one up where is it just here I think yep uh, where are we? Automatic control block. Yes, yeah, so if the altitude goes into the water, it sets it back to combat mode, which will send it back to the target. Um, there, they are, I think, are now the same. Yep. I did muck around with making it go to different altitudes, but um, basically the altitude control of the, of the vessel was not as good as I would have liked. Then we have the Hawk, which is fairly much the same the vessel but it's got jet engines um, instead so this goes at about nearly 18 meters a second whereas the other one's only around 35 it's got active targeting with radar and uh, a visual controller it's got active um, missile detection and the flares and interceptors actually released based upon um, detection rather than just automatically um, it's got a slightly longer detection range visually radar wise because it's all um, still only uh, alloy is, is quite good actually um, but this main benefit is the speed now performance wise or oh, sorry AI wise this this is going in a, a higher altitude so it just stays at about 400 altitude and then when it gets to the 16 1700 it will go to fleet, fleet mode and the same again if it goes into the water it will try to return basically one difference on this because it's got active targeting the control block if I can get to the right point, if I can find the control block again, bear with me. Come on, it's here somewhere. Uses the target, not um, so it's only its primary target that it gets in range. Whereas the Nighthawk has, because it doesn't have any channel radio channel, it will um, basically have to base it upon is there an enemy in range. Okay, so now we're going to bring in a target and look at using targeting from the enemy to gauge when the vehicle has been targeted so we've brought in a quick little perdition and we can see the errors here so 4000 meter error um, that one there has a 12 meter error so that means it must be locked on um, if the error is very large, basically it means it hasn't targeted. This one's going down and is going to soon be targeted. This one is still fairly low. Um, so we've got some missiles coming in. Now we can see where the um, our ships are. So we can see the speedy vessel going at straight above. And you can see its targeting points are still fairly not noticing it too much and this one here definitely in its stealth mode still got a reasonable error right this has gone within range now and is going to turn around and go back to the mothership hopefully or has it actually taken a hit well it's decided to go into the water instead hmm. This one has the same, so it's now turning away. There's still, a, it has been detected that range, the, the um, error is still at about 30 odd meters. And the, the missiles that are coming in, let's see if it can survive them. They're all going for the flares. Now it's coming around for another targeting run now, because it went to two and a half thousand meters, I think if we go through, and oh, it's already AI, AI dead. Let me bring something else in just to give it a target. So it's targeting the Hawk, the non-stealth 
plane it's obviously decided that's a, a better target and it has been hit a few times but it it's basically has got taken out by the enemy let's have a check on our stealth vessel So our stealth vessel still surviving and not been hit yet, basically. I think it may have been hit a little bit. It is trying to attack it, I think, with the uh, um, with its cannons. Although it's a bit difficult to see because it is attacking the, the uh, carrier that I've set up as well at the same time. Well, my final view of this is that even with the Nighthawk close as it is now, the gun on this perdition likes firing at them the non-stealth vessel first it's actually uh, i think it's dead now yep yeah. um so the stealth vessel was able to get closer without before it became the primary target for want of a better word and that may be the key point about these stealth aircraft is not whether they would survive on their own but that given a uh, an alternative target what does it take for them to become the primary target I think that works I will I think I will bring them in actually both of these vessels actually work in their own sort of way so I think it could be interesting to bring both of them in um, uh, for different reasons shall we say against different types of targets anyway as always leave any comments down below next one i think i'll look at subs i think because uh stealth subs are always fun and uh people have asked for those ones so um it's also a different dynamic because it's more about sonar and infrared than it is just purely the visual and radar but until next time as always keep playing the game and have fun <laughs>